All right, what's going on, everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. I'm a day late to talking about this topic, but been a little busy, so we're going to get right to it. So yesterday, PlayStation announced that they have made another acquisition. They have acquired Savage Game Studios. Now, when this announcement happened, the first question people asked was, who the hell are Savage Game Studios? Well, Savage Game Studios is a mobile game development studio or is going to be a studio that develops mobile games because it's my understanding if these reports are correct they haven't actually produced any mobile games as a studio yet uh, it's comprised of a team who's worked on mobile games on at other studios on other teams so they have plenty of experience working on mobile games but savage game studios itself has not um developed any mobile games. It was founded by three individuals and the team grew to 10. So they are a very small and I assume very inexpensive studio being only comprised of 10 people who are uh, making mobile games, right? So this seems to be a situation of Sony uh, attaching themselves to, a, uh, to the talent and the potential of a studio early on and acquiring them and uh, believing that they can grow and mature to be something great, which is something they have a history of. So not knocking that initiative, but this isn't exactly the news that most gamers wanted to hear or cared about because this is mobile games. Most hardcore gamers do not play mobile games. I definitely don't don't know anybody who does in the hardcore space. So this is part of their expansion, what they which they've been talking about doing for a while. Mobile, even though us as hardcore gamers, we like kind of despise the thought of mobile games because we don't really consider it real gaming, but there is a ton of money in mobile games, a lot of money in mobile games. And we know Jim Ryan loves him some money and his you know, one of his biggest goals is obviously making PlayStation a lot more revenue, a lot more profit, right? Jim Ryan is the is definitely the money guy a lot more than his predecessors. But once again, this isn't something that gamers necessarily cared about, right? So let me um, read uh, this uh, PlayStation blog post, even though I don't really think it really deserves a read i mean it's a mobile studio but i'm gonna give them i guess i'm gonna give them their due respect right so says today we announced that we have entered into a definitive agreement to acquire savage game studios a hugely uh talented team of creatives with many years of experience making some of the most popular mobile games enjoyed by players around the world they were founded uh, a few years ago in 2020 by the way just to specify uh, with the goal of fearlessly exploring bold new ideas, we share their tireless ambition to innovate along with a continued drive to expand our PlayStation, expand our audience and bring PlayStation to more people than ever uh, before, making them a perfect fit to join PlayStation Studios. So I assume what Jim Ryan wants them to do and Herman Holtz wants them to do is take PlayStation IPs or I guess some original ideas and IPs and make them into mobile games. And once again, this is this is this is really a money move to me, right? Because the only real real reason you you acquire a mobile studio or even start a mobile studio. Well, I'm not going to speak on the on the behalf of the, the the developers, right? Because they could actually have a passion for mobile games, right? But I myself, I, I find it real hard to believe that gamers, when they want a real, just real fulfill, ful, fulfilling and satisfying experience that they look to mobile games. I don't think anybody really does. But once again, it makes, it makes a lot of money, right? So the developers could be very passionate about it and they probably are. But from a publisher standpoint, it's a it's a money move because they see the the mobile you know division and how much you know stuff like Candy Crush and you know all those other mobile games bring in you know when you uh, when you get an ad on YouTube there's always like an ad and people promoting that stupid game what is it Cl 
uh, Clash of the Clans, and it's it's some trash game that none of us would ever entertain. But I guarantee you that mud that that game makes a shit ton of money, even though it's apps probably absolute garbage, right? Um, they, because these games they they take virtually nothing to make, and they rake in a bunch of cash. They're like probably automatically you know profitable, right? So. And I imagine that this studio cost them virtually nothing to buy. I'm like, my rent was probably higher than this acquisition, right? Of course, I don't mean that literally, but I mean, they're a studio with that owns nothing, right? They literally own nothing because they haven't produced any games. So they have no actual property, no intellectual property, and they're 10 people. I'm I'm sure they cost next to nothing. Not that that makes up for this acquisition. I'm just saying that's probably why they decided to, uh, because I'm sure there's a bunch of other mobile developers out there that they could have gotten with more um, titles actually delivered under their belt, but they wanted to, you know, go with something cheap. And PlayStation in their por portfolio and their earnings, um, you know, reports said they were going to do this. So we should have we should have saw it coming. So how do I feel about this, right? So I kind of feel a little similar to how it's similar to how I felt about them acquiring Bungie, but how I felt about them acquiring Bungie could, it will probably be temporary. How I feel about them acquiring this mobile studio will be permanent because right now, I don't care about what Bungie makes. I don't like Destiny. I hate Des Destiny, actually. But there is always a possibility in the future that they could make that Bungie could make something that I like, right? Even the other studios that you know, Fire Sprite or Deviation. You know, some of these are unproven and they're like new studios and all that stuff. Um, and and Haven and all this unproven studios for the most part, right? There's always the potential. Hey, they could make something really good. They could end up making something that really interests me. May not be, you know, their first game, maybe their second game. Hell, maybe their third game whenever whenever the hell that happens. But there is zero chance, zero chance that I will ever ever be interested in a game that this studio makes. Unless, I mean, because this is literally for for phone games. When we say mobile, it's not going to be for handheld. Because I mean, take un un Uncharted. Uh, what is it? Golden Abyss. I don't like handhelds. Everybody knows that. So I never bought a Vita. Hence, I never got to play Uncharted Golden Abyss. But if they ported that game to PlayStation to PS Five ever. I would play it, and I'm sure a whole bunch of other people play it. I just don't think it's worth having a handheld for. But being that my understanding is that this studio won't ever make handheld games, and Sony won't ever make a handheld again, I'm hoping they don't. This is literally going to be a game you play on Android and iOS, which I don't do, and I will never do. So this studio is pretty much virtually non-existent for me. This studio will never serve a, a, a purpose for me. Now, um, Herman Holst has assured fans that these efforts won't diminish the company's commitment to the PlayStation community, nor its passion to keep making amazing single-player narrative-driven experiences. And they've said that before, because the PlayStation community... Um, some of them are very upset. Some people understand. Some people are understanding. Some people are very upset because they're not seeing what um, is what is the future for them as a hardcore PlayStation gamer that plays on console, right? And oh, by the way, so the co-founders had a hand in the mobile franchises like Clash of the Clans, which is what I just mentioned. I just seen that in the article and Angry Birds. Um, so they're definitely experienced and experienced in making new experiences and they could, I, like I said, I don't know if they're going to make, you know, um, PlayStation, I already existing PlayStation IP mobile games or just brand new experiences, whatever they make. Right. 
So once again, I'm not I'm not necessarily happy about this acquisition, but I'm not necessarily mad either. Right. I'm not mad because what I've been told, right, is. I look at it a little bit differently simply because I don't only game on PlayStation. Right. This is what the PlayStation like platform only platform players have told me that because I game on PC, of course I have a Switch, but I also game on PC, that I don't view it. It doesn't impact me as much as it impacts them because like PlayStation is, like I've, I I feel like I'm a PlayStation fan and I'm a, I'm a primary PlayStation gamer, but apparently because you also play on PC, they say that that skews your your view a little bit because as far as Jim Ryan goes, just to get into that, I like the moves Jim Ryan has made, and I've keep, I've kept saying that the expansion of PlayStation, even though some of the like I said, the studios are a lot of the the acquisitions are unproven. We got to see what happens, right? But I like the you know the acquisition and getting more talent to make uh, more games. I like the initiative to make more multiplayer games and games as a service because y'all know literally from last generation. The beginning of last generation, I was like, PlayStation needs more multiplayer games. People have told me to shut up. No, they don't need multiplayer games. So I'm finally getting that. So yeah, I'm going to be happy about that. I can't be mad at Jim Ryan announcing all these games as a service games when I've been literally crying for a decade. Hey, we need some, right? So I'm happy about that. Happy about, you know, the new studios because that's the potential for new games and these, you know, whether single player or, or, or multiplayer. And I like the, um, uh, you know, the the uh, the move to get more PlayStation games on PC because I buy all those games on PC over again and I enjoy the mods for them. I don't beat all of them over again, but there are certain games where I do enjoy um, beating over beating them over again, especially since I'm getting like a widescreen and all that stuff. So, you know, it is the best place to play PlayStation games when it comes to PlayStation game, when it comes to uh, PC it's the PC that's the best place to play when it goes there so i'm not mad at Jim Ryan making those moves there are PlayStation fans who absolutely disagree with all that stuff right of course i disagree with the lying you know the generate the we believe in generations thing and and make and, and implying that all this stuff is you know uh like like, you know, the transition to the, the PS5 was just going to be a hard cutoff. Of course, I don't like that lying. Of course, I don't agree with um, increasing the price of the PlayStation 5, even though it doesn't affect me and I don't necessarily care. I don't agree with it either. But the other things I mentioned before, I am absolutely agree with all of those moves. And I think it does and will benefit the PlayStation platform moving forward. Also, I can't ex I can't exactly be this Jim Ryan hater when when you look at the I tell people this all the time when you look at the first two years of the P PS4 versus the PS5 the PS5 blows the PS4 first two years out of the water it is not even close it is the the, the PS5 shows how bad the launch of the PS4 was it was bad. It was, the first two years of the PS4, maybe I'm missing one thing, but it was Knack, Killzone, and Infamous. And it, versus in the first two years of the PlayStation 5, Returnal, Demon Souls, Ratchet, Horizon, Miles Morales, God of War, Gran Turismo, Astro Play, Playroom. And I feel like I'm that's it. I feel and I feel like I'm still forgetting stuff. And then there was there was like some second party stuff like Kana, Stray, um, Sifu, you know, so I'm just saying it blows that out the water like they're they're lapping the PS4 as far as like first party releases go. And the, and, and if you still want to count, you know, Last of Us, you know, the remake, you, you cannot count it either way. It's lapping the PS4. So as far as like content goes, which is the most important thing to me, the most important thing is games. And they've been delivering that. Right. So. If PlayStation comes to if, for example, next year comes and it's just dry out here for as far as PlayStation first party releases, of course, I'm going to say something. I ain't going to be happy. 
I'm gonna be like, where the game's at? But currently, I am literally still sitting in the midst, in the midst of PlayStation first party releases. Last of Us releases in a few days, God of War releases in a few months. I can't exactly be the, at least me personally, I'm not necessarily upset because I'm getting games. At the point where I'm not getting games, that's when I'm gonna complain, right? I expect Sony to announce a game, a, a game show showing what's coming next year. This, well, not this month, September's not here, but in September, if they do not announce a show, that is a big L for them, and that is a problem. Because you've been keeping quiet, and all of, all of the first-party studios, we know they're working on multiple projects. So you definitely got to be able to show something. There's no reason you shouldn't be able to show something. So that's all I'm saying. Some people say I'm a, I'm a fanboy for being happy with what's been released so far. But my thing is, and PlayStation fans can you know obviously be outspoken about not not knowing what's coming in the future that's fine but i didn't i don't remember this there being this like unhappiness with the first 2 years of the ps4 when we knew even less during the first 2 years of the ps4 of what was coming and we had less games in the first 2 years so we're better now than we were in the ps4 days so, but I think the fact that like Sean Layden and um, Shuhei were a lot more outspoken and, you know, they, they felt like gamers felt like they were connected to them and they were reachable. I think that made it a little bit better. And Jim Ryan is often on his like on in the Himalayan mountains or something like that and unreachable and all that stuff. And, you know, he's very robotic and a businessman. I think that kind of, you know, hurts it. But like I said, I'm happy as a gamer regarding the ps5 i you know and, and the releases that we've gotten so that's the way i i feel about that like i said but they gotta have a show this september they have to if they don't that's an l and at the point where they're not releasing games first party in an entire year lack of them you know just seldomly yeah absolutely that's a problem um but like i said i agree with the uh other stuff but this mobile just rounding back to this uh this mobile acquisition kind of neutral about it it makes no sense to me i'm gonna view this studio as one that doesn't really exist it's a business move it's a money move it's part of the expansion so that's what i that's what i chalk this up to so but like i said herman holtz jim ryan i can't really be mad at him and i think when people put the emotion aside and look at the product that we've gotten and not how you personally feel about things i think it kind of makes it hard to like really say like they're being they're they've done like some type of bad job or something like that but it depends on what's important to you because like i said the content is what's most important to me um but yeah let me know what y'all think about all this hit the like button uh follow me on twitter and hit the like button and subscribe on youtube if you haven't done all that stuff Hit the notification bell too. You can know anytime I upload. And uh, yeah, I'll catch y'all on the next video, man. I'm out of here. Peace. If I can find the stop button. Oh, there it goes.